Hi, my name is Emma, and the person I chose to research was Artie Shaw for this presentation, also known as Arthur Arshowski, I believe that's how you say it. He was born on May 23rd in 1910. He was born in New York, and he was born a day before my birthday. My birthday is May 24th, so I thought this person was perfect for me to research. Later on, he ended up moving to New Haven, Connecticut with his family, and at some point, his dad ended up leaving him, and that is what inspired him to give music a try. By age 13, he bought his first saxophone with the money that he earned from working in a grocery store, and by 15, he switched to the clarinet and was already considered a professional and could start gigging. He left home and went to New York with a New Haven dance band that was led by Johnny Cavallaro, and he started touring. Artie Shaw is known as a popular American clarinetist and band leader in the 1930s and 1940s. Moving on to music and artistry, Artie played with a B-flat clarinet when he performed. He was also known as a boundary-crossing musician. He valued experimentation and innovation rather than always trying to fit in like the rest of the popular musicians such as Benny Goodman or um, Charlie Barnett. And this is what made him super unique and stand out to many people. Many people assumed his IQ level to be very high, around 160. And that made people come to the conclusion that this is why his style of music was so unique and out of the ordinary. Basically his whole career, he was competing against Benny Goodman, who happens to be my favorite musician that we have researched this year. He is also an American clarinetist and band leader during this time of uh, the swing era. And a fun fact, Artie and Benny were born, both born on May 23rd, but a year apart. Artie played bop, cool jazz, and was known for swing music, but with his own twist of a modern style. His greatest hit that he is best known for was his recording of Cole Porter's Begin the Big Ween, I believe that's how you say that, which featured Billie Holiday, and that's kind of where his music career really started, and that's really where people valued his music. Artie was the first white band leader to hire a black singer full-time. He supported anyone black or white. He just looked for their musical talents when hiring people. Other famous songs that he is known for include Stardust, which I've definitely, I was looking into that song and I've definitely heard it many times. I just never really paid attention. And that's why I think this class is really cool because it's just really opening my eyes and expanding my taste in music and just love for like old songs that I never would have looked into unless I was in this class. And another song that he was known for was Frenez Frenesi. Him and his orchestra ended up releasing 14 original songs and 172 covers. Now looking back to where his first band started. He formed his first group in 1936, and this was also a super unusual band. It consisted of the clarinet, a rhythm section, and string quartet, <clears throat> which relates back to him being super unusual and always trying things that were out of the box or out of the ordinary. Their first performance that caught people's attention was at Imperial Hall, and he ended up getting a record deal there from Tommy Rockwell, who's part of a booking agency. He noticed his band and gave Artie suggestions to add two trumpets, a trombone, a tenor saxophone, and a singer. Their band ended up separating due to 
lack of public interest, people thought it was too unique and less traditional than, let's say, Benny Goodman's music. People wanted to dance and sing, and that's what a lot of people did to Benny's music as opposed to Artie's. After that, Shaw decided to form a swing group of his own, and normally it's made up of a trumpet, a clarinet, a trombone, a saxophone, and a rhythm section, five sections like that. But Artie's happened to be three rhythm instruments, a string quartet, and a clarinet. Once again, super unique. And I just think it, I admire he'll fail and he'll still try new things until he gets something good out of it and I just admire that about him. Finally, by 1938, he formed his band with Billie Holiday and that's when they recorded the cover that ended up being his biggest hit like I previously said. Artie brought to the table a lot of improvisations that consisted of blending elements of traditional classical and more of his own twist of modern forms. People admired his experimentation since that's what stood out to many. Something I found super fascinating was that during World War II, he enlisted in the Navy and led a service band throughout the Pacific War Zone. He ended up retiring in 1954 due to the fact that he was upset. He just didn't have very much time to develop new arrangements and was getting irritated the fact that he had to play the same pieces over and over and over again. He ended up dying at the age of 94 on December 30th, 2004 due to natural causes, but remains a huge fan for many people still. When I was looking into YouTube videos, I just noticed lots of people commenting saying that Artie Shaw was, in their opinion, better than Benny Goodman. He left a huge inspiration in our lives and it was like their grandparents' favorite song by him or parents or some someone they lost and it just touched many people, his music, and I just thought that was very cool. Thank you.